Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from North Lake Images and in this video I'm going to look at uh, this printer, the Pro 300 from Canon and making what are commonly called fine art prints. Now, I'll admit I don't actually know what fine art prints are uh, other than as a marketing term, but in general it means using better quality papers, uh, better quality inks that are going to last a while, um, all things that are helpful if you want to sell your prints. Now I've done quite a few other videos about selling prints and those mostly would be of the fine art type, but anyway. I'm going to be using a paper I tested with it. This is Canson. Um, it's a specialist inkjet paper, rag, photographic, and it is 310 grams, the weight of it. So it's quite a hefty paper. It's a very smooth surface, matte art paper. And um, you tend to find matte papers commonly, more commonly come in the art category, that and Baraita papers. But I'm just going to look at using this particular rag paper, which is just how it's made. And I'm going to print a color print and a black and white print of the typical sort, which people might call fine art prints. As I say, we'll, I will make no more comment as to what that actually means though, but anyway. Here's a sheet of the Canson. It's very white. Probably got a little bit of optical brightness in it, which may matter for some people, but uh, certainly it's a nice, good quality. I've made a custom profile for it. There are profiles available, and many companies that sell papers like this, and there are many types, uh, they will have profiles available that you can use to get the best quality. For color, I'm going to use the profile. For black and white print, I'm going to use the black and white print mode because uh, with this printer and many pigment printers for Epson and Canon, the black and white print mode works better. <coughs> Load the paper up into the uh, printer. Just, I'm just loading a single sheet here. There is a sheet feeder at the back for thicker papers, but I've discovered that the Pro 300 really doesn't need it if you load a single sheet like this. It works perfectly well from the top. Uh, it goes there and it wants to know the type of paper. Now, I always set this with a printer. As much as anything, it helps reduce the number of mistakes I make. And uh, even though I print a lot, I'm often changing papers, printers, and it helps just to have a reminder by setting the paper size and type here, as well as on the computer I'm going to send the image to. So, the size. It's A3+, plus or 13 inch by 19 inch. It is not plain paper. Now there are loads of settings here, and if you like, you can actually create your own custom settings. Now I've written an article about the custom settings and how you'd use it. Uh, it can be helpful on sometimes, certainly if you use paper often, it can help be helpful to have the paper's name appear here. But in this instance, I'm setting it to heavy art paper, would be my normal setting. I've set the paper type there, so it's ready to go. Um, I can now go over to the computer, uh, printing from a laptop. Uh, this is connected wirelessly. Um, other times I might have it connected with uh, ethernet or even USB, makes no real difference for this. Now I'll start off with a color print. And this is a view of uh, Chroma Pier on the North Norfolk coast. I'm using the Canon software for this. Now I've uh, selected heavyweight fine art paper. Uh, there is a smooth paper option, but that only works by the rear tray. And I found it makes very little difference. So I've set the size. I'm going for highest print quality. Uh, we're not worried about the speed. For layout, um, I'm centering it. I can actually change the size slightly so I could make it a bit bigger if I want to fit the paper. Now that depends on how you're going to mount and display your print, whether you want a border or not. I'm not going to print borderless here. Uh, typically, uh, with prints like this, you do have a border. For color management, I'm going to be using a printer profile. 
Now the automatic setting of this is not what I want. I want to select a particular profile. Now I want a brighter look here, so I'm picking perceptual, but whether you choose perceptual or relative colorimetric really does depend on how the image looks on the paper. Notice the soft proofing here. It helps in this choice. Don't rely on soft proofing too much. Um, it's not a completely accurate rendition of what the print will look like, but it gives you an idea. And with everything set like that, I can just go print. I've uh, sent the image to be printed from the software there. Uh, printer's just waking up, the image is uh, coming from the computer. And it would be a few minutes printing. I'll just pull this out just for the print to rest on as it comes out. And here comes the print. Um, it's not terribly fast. That's a combination of printing at the very highest quality setting, which makes a slight difference um, on this particular printer. In general, I would say print at one off the highest print quality settings and you won't note as much a difference and the print will come out faster. It's also because it's a Wi-Fi connection to a slowish laptop. It's a big file. Um, all these things slow it down a little bit, uh, but it still only take a few minutes to print. And uh, after a few minutes, print is uh, nearly done. The colour looks good on this. Um, with a good profile and with a good choice of paper, you really can get quite good results. This is for, you know, for a matte print. Now, I'll come back to the print in a moment, but I'm just going to make another print so we can compare the two of them using uh, black and white. Now, in this, I'm printing using the black and white print mode of this printer rather than using a profile. And I would say, in general, the best results you see come when you use the black and white print mode for printers like this and use color ICC profiles for printing color. But anyway, let's do another picture. I've loaded another sheet. The details are still heavy art paper A3 plus on the front here. Just go over to the computer and we'll print this one black and white. In this particular image, I'm using the black and white photo mode. That's printing black and white. The media choice is the same, uh, but what really matters here is selecting black and white photo. Uh, the fact that there's a printer profile and a rendering intent uh, mentioned here makes no difference in this. The black and white photo print overrides it. However, I do note that from the last print, the layout is slightly different. The picture's too big for the page. It's because of the aspect ratio of it, but that's easy enough to change because I can change the size of it slightly. And this is one bit where the Canon software really is quite useful. We have quite a largish margin on that one. And I've reduced the size and uh, I'll print. So most of the settings between doing the color print and this black and white print are the same. So the paper size is the same, paper types the same. What I have had to change is from color and using a profile to black and white and using the black and white print mode. And uh, this will load up this sheet of paper and we should get a black and white print. And then I can have a look at both of them and show the differences. Apart from the obvious ones, that one's color and one's black and white. Here comes the print. It's coming out slightly quicker than the color one. It's not as large a print area. And for some reason, black and white prints a little bit quicker on this. Here's the black and white print, nearly finished. Um, once again, first thing I note when I see uh, print coming out of the printer is what's the overall look of the print. Um, this is one bit where I don't put my glasses on because uh, I actually find the softness I get from not wearing my reading glasses gives me a much better evaluation of the tonal balance of the print. You're not distracted by detail, uh, which uh, is easy to do when you've spent a long while working on an image on 
perfecting detail, sharpening, all the other things that you tend to do when you convert an image to black and white, then process it and print it. Well, there's the print. So now we have a black and white print of the Oregon coast. I'll just get my color print. So now we have the two prints. Both printed on the Canson rag paper. Uh, we have the black and white one, which is the Oregon coast on the uh, coastal highway, Great Drive. And here is uh, Chroma Pier on the North Norfolk coast. Um, unusually bright and sunny. Uh, I imagine today it is cold and gray, but that's a North Sea, it's often cold and gray. Um, so there you have two prints printed on what I would happily call a fine art rag paper. Very little effort involved in printing them. It's the preparation of the files beforehand that counts. Once you've prepared the, and obviously taking the photos to start with, once you've done that, the print process itself is relatively straightforward. So color profile for the color image, black and white print mode for the black and white image. Now I've got lots more, I've got a detailed review of this printer, there are other videos, there are bits about black and white, there are bits about profiling and all kinds of aspects of using it. So um, I hope this uh, quick overview of fine art printing on the Pro 300 has been of some interest, so um, thank you very much.